uh, thanks for coming. So this is, as I said, it's going to be skills-based volunteering in IT. So the headline there, the tagline there is uh, partly making IT good for society, which is a line we use at BDCS really quite a lot uh, to, to encapsulate what it is that we do from a social point of view. So obviously from a volunteering point of view, the whole aim about volunteering is, is normally to do good. So uh, we're going to talk about, as I've just said, how that, how that will work, hopefully, for charities and other voluntary organisations, not necessarily things that are formally incorporated as charities, but, but voluntary bodies how it will work for you, how you can help, but also how you can gain something from the experience. And not just from a, a slightly warm feeling inside that you're doing good, but from a career progression point of view, we will talk about how we can begin to put some things in place now that will enable all of our members, all of our professional members, and perhaps others as well, to increase their IT-based skill sets and to get skills they might not be able to get in their day jobs. Um, so I'm Dave Donahue, by the way. I'm the chair of the Bristol Bath Branch, and I'm also the inclusion officer for the Pride Specialist Group inside BCS, and I'm the vice chair of the Digital Divide Specialist Group in BCS. I'll, I'll come back to those again in the next hour or so, because those are specialist groups that we have that aren't purely technical. Um, I'm here with Michael. So do you want to do a quick intro? Hello, my name is Mike Warman. I'm the chair and, well, I'm the chair, I'm the branch secretary and membership secretary, and I seem to have lucked into the um, webmaster role for the South Wales branch, as well as being a member of the well, community support committee and the enterprise architecture specialist group. I'm a member of that as well. Nice. So, in fact, we'll probably talk a little bit about community support today, because that's mm -hmm. one of the bits of BCS I think that might be key. In making sure that we organize things well to make all this volunteering stuff um, efficient mm -hmm. and effective. There we are. So, what we're going to talk about today is uh, I've covered quite a lot of it already. So, I'll, I'll first of all I'll tell you what I'm going to tell you, then I'll tell you it, and then I'll tell you that I've told it in a, in a fairly standard way. So, um, this is what, what's, what's volunteering all about? So, I'm getting another, another admission there. So, Charities and as charities formally have this. Other voluntary organisations will have this as well. Charities have got defined objectives. Charities have things that they want to achieve to make society better. And some of those might well benefit from our skills. So the Digital Poverty Alliance, for example, which I don't think is formally a charity, but it's certainly in the scope of what we're talking about here today, helps people to use the digital world where they might otherwise not be able to for reasons of cash poverty, lack of skills, lack of connectivity. There's a number of reasons why an individual might not be able to use, get the full effects out of the digital world. So the Digital Poverty Alliance has that as one of its goals. But some charities have goals that are not related to what we do in our day jobs. They just um, provide other benefits to society that we cannot help with using our day-to-day -day IT skill sets. But charities also need to just exist in the real world. They need to exist in the 21st century and do stuff that other businesses, other organisations, other people need to do. They need to do web stuff, they need to do email stuff, they need to do calendars, they need to advertise, they need to manage their internal business. And these areas can absolutely benefit from using our skills. So what we're talking about here when we think about volunteering um, using our professional skills is if we can help charities with their admin, then those charities can do their business more effectively. They can do better at delivering the charity objectives into society if they're struggling to, to do the digital stuff that we can then help them do. And in fact, this overlaps quite well with one of my roles in, in the Digital Divide Specialist Group, which is to consider not just individual people as the beneficiaries of our Digital Divide efforts, but to consider charities and other voluntary bodies as the beneficiaries. So we just need to help charities do the things that they need to do internally so that they can then go on and do the things that they need to do externally. So how will skills-based volunteering work? What is it that we're actually asking people to do? What is it that we're asking people to do better? So I've spoke to a number of people in this area over the past year, couple of years, really. So this has been an idea that I've had for really quite a long time now, and it's gathered momentum over that time. And now we're going to, to start kicking it off in a much, much bigger way. How might your skills help? This question normally comes back with an answer, I don't really have any skills that might help a charity. And for people who are professional members of BCS, for people who are 
in some way interested in what we're talking about here today, have got an interest in BCS in some way, I bet you have. In fact, you undoubtedly have. The, the barrier that is there beyond which you might be able to add value to a charity is really quite low. It's surprisingly low because we're not always talking here about writing some software for a charity or doing some kind of massive five year long IT strategy. In fact, that's probably not the case of what we're looking for. What we're looking for is almost certainly in the main IT skills. It's we can't use email effectively. We can't use cloud storage effectively. We can't use calendars effectively. We can't communicate effectively. And these things for people who work in our industry are probably really, really simple things that might add massive value. So really what we're talking about is how might your skills help? So you've definitely got some skills. What is it about a charity's needs that are going to overlap with those skills? How can you fulfill those needs using your day-to-day -day job skills? And then also what we're going to cover is who are the stakeholders? Who's involved in this overall picture? So the overall picture is really which bits of BCS. So, so I know that we have a few people here today who aren't members of BCS, but we have but the majority of the people who are registered today are members of BCS. So it's things like BCS branches cover regions. So Bristol and Bath is a branch. So we have this notion of breaking things down into geographic regions. So city, couple of cities, South Wales, Bristol and Bath, three in London, 50, 60 odd around the rest of the UK. Um, but also we have specialist groups who have the kind of specialist focus. Digital Divide and Pride are specialist groups that aren't quite purely technical, but you know, enterprise architecture, specialist group, um, program management, probably. I'm not a fan of program management. I know we need to have program management, it's not, not really my area. But these things have got technical special uh, specialisms. We have these specialisms, these specialties are undoubtedly going to be in a position to provide a different value to this picture than branches. Branches are going to know which hopefully will know which charities have you got locally, where are we physically, who lives here, who can help who's going to turn up to an Age UK drop-in centre that helps people to get online so they can speak to their grandchildren. Which bits of BCS are they? Which non-BCS bits are we going to talk to? So the charities themselves aren't going to be inside BCS. But there are other things. NCVO is uh, an organisation I'll talk about later on today. Local authorities, education authorities, um, schools, colleges. These are perhaps not quite charities, but certainly... We're, certainly um, bodies where we might see some benefit that we can add that are public sector. And then additionally, there will be other, uh, other professional bodies uh, related to what we're talking about here. So we're thinking about adding our IT skills into this picture to benefit charities. One thing that comes immediately to mind because a, a friend of mine is doing something along these lines right now, program management, project management, any professional bodies that talk about this kind of thing, you can easily imagine that other professionals might well have skills that could be valued to charity. Now, there's certainly a way in which larger charities are going to employ people to do these things. If we think instead about smaller charities that don't have the ability to do that, then it's, it doesn't take a, a massive leap to imagine that we can help out for free in areas where they're simply not able to fulfill these requirements on their own. And then the next thing we'll think about is how do we get things started? What do we actually do next to make this happen? So we're not quite started from scratch because in general, in society, we do have people who volunteer. We do have people doing stuff in society uh, for nothing, for, for no money. Volunteering is already a thing. I'm not saying we're inventing volunteering, but we can get BCS involved. We can get ourselves involved from a professional capacity so that we can use our skills. And the point behind this, of course, is that we can do this thing more effectively. We're not just talking about um, delivering teas and coffees to inpatients in hospital because they haven't got anyone else to talk to while in hospital. That's the value that charities add. We're talking about doing something else instead so that we can do the whole picture more effectively. That's really what we're talking about here. So I'll talk now about the vision. So there are two visions here. There's the vision of where I want you to be in an hour when we finish talking here and the vision of where I would like society, including BCS, but society uh, as a wider thing, to be in a year, a year and a bit perhaps, but in the next year or so, I'm going to talk about the vision that I want to see. How do I want society to be in a year? So first of all, in an hour, when we finish today, I would like you to be in a position where you understand how you might be able to help. You understand what you will need to do next if you do want to help. 
and you'll appreciate that you do have skills to offer. I, I don't doubt for a moment that everyone who's here today has got skills, professional skills, that are going to be of value to a charity. Uh, we'll provide you with a resource pack. Perhaps resource pack is stretching what we're going to give you. But there are some experiences that we have locally um, that maybe you haven't thought of. So that the nature of the public sector where you are is going to be the key one here. Who is it that you need to talk to to take things further? There's probably four or five different organisations, bodies, people that you're going to need to talk to to take the next step. So if you're the one locally who takes the next step, you'll know how to do that. You know how to get in touch with these local stakeholders. So these local stakeholders are going to be things like local authorities, local charities, um, charity support charities. I'll tell you what they are uh, later on today, and I'll tell you how to get in touch with those and how to form relationships with those, how to use a BCS branch to form those relationships, <clears throat> to cement those relationships, and to build those relationships, pardon me. And then at the end of um, today's session, I'm going to give you three or four calls to action. So depending on who you are, uh, the call to action will be, I'm going to ask you to do some stuff next. I'm going to ask you to take those next steps. And I'm going to ask you to feed back to me, to BCS, to your local branch, to a charity, to do something next. Uh, so, so that as a whole, we can get these next steps done. In a year, though, the vision that I want to see a year from now, so I'm going to have to move some screens because I've got just too many things going on here. Here we are. In a year, what I wanted to have is that BCS branches, these are the local bits of BCS where professionals can come together and talk about BCS stuff in general. But these branches have relationships with local charities, that local charities in general know that this is a thing now, that getting professionals in to do stuff in their professional capacity is a thing, and they know from the IT point of view that we are the people to talk to about that. So if there's a small local charity that says, we need some help with our digital stuff. If that charity, just in general across the country, knows that our local BCS branch is Bristol and Bath, I've got a contact email address, phone number, website where I can go to get in touch with them, and that they will then help me to take the next steps to fulfil my um, IT needs inside my charity, that to me will be a massive, massive win. I would love that to be the case. That's where I want to be in a year. If we can get that locally in a year, if you can get that in your area in a year, I think that'd be massive. That relies on that branch being able to do that. As well as the charities knowing that it's there, it relies on the branch being able to say, yep, if you come to us and say, you've got a requirement for some stuff, we've got 2,000 volunteers in Bristol Bath. 10% of those are decent volunteers. Well, 200 people who are willing to do some, some stuff will put you in touch. You can do that with them. We can make that happen. That would be great. That's what, I want to, that's what I want the situation to be. This is my vision for a year. The second part is that individual people inside BCS use volunteering not just to, to aid the charities, although that is, of course, the ultimate aim. And in fact, I would, I would almost rather that you do the actual charitable thing. I would much rather see someone going in and, and giving teas and coffees and chatting to patients in the hospital who haven't otherwise got anyone to talk to than doing the IT bit. But if your skill sets mean that that whole picture happens more effectively, then that's a win. But there's another win that's possible here, and I'll talk about this today, is that as an individual person, your volunteering will give you an opportunity to get more skills, to get more skills by understanding your skill set, understanding where you want to go to, understanding what the gap is in your skill set, looking at a framework. BCS has a framework for understanding your skill set. So Sophia Plus, we'll talk about that today, is going to be how you measure your current skills, how you measure your future skills, how you measure those gaps, how you understand how you can fill those gaps. What we will have in a year, I hope, is the ability to say, I can't get these skills in my day job, but I can, with the help of a mentor locally who comes from my local BCS branch, fill those gaps in my skill set by doing some volunteering. D of E fits into this really quite nicely. There's a volunteering thing where the intent behind D of E is that we give uh, 16, 17, 18-year-olds some skills by getting them to do volunteering because we recognise that this is something that's valuable to them as well as to others. From a national point of view, I want BCS as a whole to have better relationships with NCBO, SCBO, and NICFA, who are the national, and you can imagine what other things stand for, National Council of Voluntary Organisations. It's a national body that coordinates efforts in some certain particular sense among um, voluntary organisations and, and other charities. And then additionally, I've mentioned this already today, that other professional bodies are doing the same thing. We can learn from them if they do better than us, but we can help them out if they're not doing as well as us yet. 
the professionals as a whole. In fact, I haven't written this one down. What we'd love to have is that the notion of professionalism includes volunteering as an aspect of it. So we expect professionals to have certain skills. We expect professionals to abide by a code of conduct. I would very, very much like the norm to be a professional as standard do some volunteering with their professional skill sets to benefit society, making IT good for society in a really, really concrete way. So that, that's the vision. Let me just find it where my mouse, oh, wrong mouse, sorry. So, who are we helping? Just to be clear here, and I think I've been clear already, but just to just to be doubly clear, we're not talking here about volunteering for BCS, which is in fact what Michael and I are doing here today, but volunteering mm -hmm. for charities through BCS. So the ex one example that I've had uh, until recently, is one, one that I've got now, one that I haven't got now, is this is the kind of thing we're talking about. So I'm a school governor, uh, to quote infants is, is uh, that way a little bit. Um, and schools will often need school governors to have that digital expertise. Schools do digital stuff. Schools have all manner of things that they do that requires them to, to interact with the digital world. And that could be teaching or it could be doing their internal business. As a school governor, this is really quite a big commitment. Regular meetings, regular stuff to do, regular work to do, a couple of hours a month, maybe for two or three years. You look at a long-term commitment with a, probably quite a high level of skill required and probably quite a high level of commitment required. School governor and charity trustee are really quite similar roles. We're thinking about overseeing the work of people who are probably employed, paid employees doing the stuff. Um, Fred IOH does that thing that I said earlier, having volunteers going and deliver teas and coffees, and most importantly, talking to patients in hospital who are stressed, ill, unhappy, isolated, alone quite a lot of the time, who have no one else to talk to. The tea and coffee is just a way to get people in to talking to these people. These are the charitable goals. These are the charitable objectives. These are the things that we might help out by enabling them to do their business. But again, school governor, charity trustee, long-term commitment, quite a high level of skill required, quite a high level of commitment required. At the very opposite end of the spectrum, what we're talking about here is that a charity needs some software written. My day job is writing software. Um, it's really quite rare, I think, that charities need some software written, but it does happen. I had a requirement recently that I couldn't fulfill. In fact, I didn't know the kind of software well enough, and I couldn't find anybody else to do it. But every now and then, you've got a charity, a museum that uses some stuff to do planetarium stuff for a school visit. They can't do their stuff because they because it's broken and they can't work it and something's gone wrong. That kind of thing is a thing that happens every now and then. Need. That's a short-term commitment, very different skill set, not a lower skill set by any means, but a very, very different skill set maybe a one-off thing. I'll take me three hours to do this thing, and then it's call me in six months if it happens again, but my engagement with you is now over. That's something at very much the opposite end of the spectrum. A much, much more direct way of helping out using our skills is something that Age UK do here in Bath, certainly, and elsewhere, I think, as well, it's quite likely. Um, a digital access drop-in session for people who are older, who aren't familiar enough with this technology to be able to use it comfortably themselves. What we're talking about here is there's an hour once a week with a volunteer drop in, help somebody out. Somebody will turn up and say, I can't use this bit of digital technology. I can't use Zoom on this laptop. And now I can't speak to my grandchildren. What we're talking about here is social isolation, access to public services, access to health services, inability to use the internet really is what we're talking about here. But with our skill sets, you can do that directly. So Age UK do this, um, there's a Salvation Army place in town here in Bath that does the same thing. And um, there will be many, many places similarly that do this kind of thing, where undoubtedly people on this call will have the right skills to go in and help really directly. That's a kind of, sorry, use the wrong mouse again. So what can you do to help? How can you actually get involved and do the thing that needs to be done? So again, the, the barrier to getting involved is almost certainly much, much lower than you would have thought it is. So there are four roughly skill sets that we're talking about here. We're talking about general. So for me, calendars is a big one here for charities. If, you, if a charity can't work calendars effectively, then what's going to happen at the trustee board level, at the high management level, is that people are going to miss meetings. If people miss meetings, 
things don't get done and then things slow down. One thing I have learned in the charity sector is that things generally move quite slowly anyway. If we add into that mix the notion that by misusing our IT, we slow things down even more, then we're just in more trouble than we were at the start. So it would be great, I think, if we could get to the point where that kind of IT skill set meant that everyone could just do it on their own or with a bit of help, um, charities can do this stuff, where things happen at a similar pace to the way they happen in industry. That'd be great. Seems unlikely because people are volunteers and part-time. But the key thing here really is that the skill set we're talking about here is not you need to know massive, massive loads of detail about how whole software processes work to build stuff. That's not what we're talking about for this skill set. We're saying, how does Word work? How does email work? How do I log on to my email securely? How do I do these stuff that you probably find really, really simple? And how do we get that information out there so that individual charities can do their stuff more effectively, more easily? Again, the writing software thing is a thing. I have seen requirements where a charity needs software written. I think they are rare, but they're there. But here, though, the writing software skill set is, I kind of want to say dev almost, because it's such a rounded skill set, because you're almost certainly not working in an environment where um, somebody wants some software written, and they've got a whole CI infrastructure up and running already, where you can just plug in, spend two hours writing a bit of C, and then it's all done. That's not what we're talking about here. In the cases where somebody wants a software written for charity, it's going to be, but we don't know what software is. We don't know, some guy did some stuff for us, and now I think he said it was in GitHub, and I've got his name, but that's all I've got. So that skill set is going to be going in, speaking to people in a nice, pleasant, informative way, getting the right information, and doing that whole end-to-end -end process. So solo software engineering is probably um, a decent way of saying this, and it feels a little bit maverick saying that, but it's um, that you can imagine that skill set's going to be wider when you're working in an environment where that infrastructure simply isn't there. And this really is, is a decent picture, I think, of the nature of that whole difference between working in industry and working on a really short-term engagement for a charity, because the environment we're thinking about, if I'm going to do a two-hour engagement for a charity, is going to be really, really different. It's not going to be. I go in for a nine to five, five days a week, and then three months later, I've software. It's going to be, I'm working in the evenings for someone that I don't know, and I'm not quite sure what the deal is, but I want to get something done for charity. It's a different skill set. Up at the very top level, back into information governance, if we're thinking about charity trustee board, or we're thinking about school governor, then we're probably thinking about something like information governance, GDPR, and security. Because if we're thinking about legally required mandated trustee board roles we're thinking about oversight and auditing and legal requirements and that probably means gbdr charities where ch charities that have got volunteer lists which charities probably have got are going to be keeping personal information about people and that probably means they're going to be required to do some gdpr stuff they're certainly in broad terms going to be required to do some stuff about managing people's data even if they're not technically bound by GDPR, we're going to have to do some stuff in this area. At this level, we're thinking about a very, very different skill set. I need to know how GDPR works. I need to know what the legal requirements here. I need to know how we do this kind of thing. That skill set is a real skill set. That means that we're probably thinking about longer term engagements. A charity is probably not going to say, can you give us an hour on GDPR? They're probably saying something like, we're looking for a trustee. Trustees can come to meetings a couple of hours a month and do more work a couple of hours a month and we want you to stick around for three years. That's probably what they're thinking. So it's a very, very different kind of feel. That said though, in all of these things, there is almost certainly a way in which general good sense, the ability to think clearly, think clearly, think robustly, talk to people nicely, talk to people diplomatically, is gonna be of value at that higher level is probably a decent way to say it. And I would hope that certainly people who are professional members of any professional body will have that. Because if we're thinking about professionalism in industry in a way where we have a professional body, <clears throat> we are probably thinking about things like you can sit in meetings and talk sensibly and about strategy and planning. You can be self-aware, be self-managed, work with others well. And these things aren't related to IT, not directly anyway. These things are related to doing the job 
and doing it well. But, but a lot of them are the soft skills you'd you'd expect somebody within IT to have, wouldn't it? The ability to listen. And at the end of the day, there's an awful lot of the people that you'll be dealing with or helping and supporting in the charities. That's their job. That's that's what they do. They look after what purpose of that charity. They're not IT people. They're not technical people. And it might just be the simple. They just don't understand GitHub. They don't understand the internet. And all you need to do is sit down and just like, and chat to them. And exactly the same as you would, you know, in your day job at working within IT. Absolutely. Absolutely. Totally. And even, even with that skill set, though, so I, I phrase that, I think, perhaps as that sits at the top level. And by top level here, I mean in terms of length of commitment, amount of commitment mm-hmm. required. But as well as that, that's a valuable skill. Sorry, one more admission. That's a valuable skill, even on those short term engagements. So just be able to sit down and, and, and talk. There's a distinction as well, by the way, in between the role of a trustee, the role of a governor, and other roles. So you're so if we're going to talk about going and helping a charity do some IT stuff, that's something you almost certainly wouldn't want a trustee to do. So there are reasons why you don't want school governors or trustees doing that kind of stuff, because they need to be almost aloof and set apart so they can do auditing and accountability. But but again, these things are profession, having professionals work as um, trustees. It's going to be a valuable thing. There's lots of other valuable things as well. As an aside, by the way, I was at a, a, an, an event called Diverse CXO in London a, a couple of months back, and it struck me that I, I because there were London people, and I had a, a bit of a prejudice against rich people in London doing fancy rich people in London things. I was not expecting to see CXOs in London talking so much, so openly, so frequently over the evening about what they were already doing for charities. So it's really, really nice to see that at that high level, we're talking about CEOs and CSOs, about saying, well, I've just done a, in fact, I spoke to one person who did do this. I've, I've, I've spun up a couple of um, a couple of um, startups, and each one of those, I'm giving everyone half day a week to do some voluntary work. And I thought, okay, so I take back everything I thought about rich London people doing rich London people things. I'm really quite impressed by that charity engagement. Because I've, I've gone there with the intent of saying, we should get more of you people doing charity things. And they all come back and said, yeah, yeah, you're only just doing this. We did this already. That was really, really nice to see at that high level, at this level where we are, well, pardon me, in this area where we are, I think we can do more, we can do it more effectively. But yeah, that, 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 it's that good sensing. So, so Michael, what would you call that? Is that, I mean, is it, ju- is that just professionalism or is it something else? What is that skill set? Well, I think it's the, it's the soft skills, isn't it? I mean, I, and I think it's what often happens within IT, we, we, we're so focused on doing IT, whatever our day job as project managers delivering it, I'm a business analyst, doing all these bits and pieces. I think we just, we take for granted the, the, the knowledge and the skills that we just pick up as part of our job to get to something of value without realizing that there are people who struggle with it. I mean, I, I've got family members that struggle with IT. The number of time I go to see um, my partner's mother and have to reset up Android phone for her because she's gone in and she's changed the settings and then she can't find anybody. So I can't I can't phone Sam, yes, because you've blocked her. You've blocked her. That means you can't receive messages from her. This is these this is what you need to do on Android OS. Hit settings, hit this, hit this. It's as simple as that. And an awful lot of it is just all the skills that we already have as an IT. I, I mean if, if if we just take a step back, this this event came out of a, a meeting, or not meeting a, a Dave and I caught up on something. We were chatting about um, some volunteering our companies were doing, both our companies. We both work for two different organizations. And um, they were doing litter picking. It's like, okay, you've got people who work in IT doing litter picking. Um, couldn't a cha- wouldn't a charity benefit more? Was there more value from somebody in IT saying, this is how you should be using Outlook? This is what you need to look at when you're looking at Microsoft tools. You should, you, you need to be, you know, this is how you would configure an Excel spreadsheet. This is how you, the number of people that didn't know how to do simple formulas or an Excel spreadsheets, really, really basic stuff. It's stuff that we almost do off the bat. We just, you know, somebody gives you a problem, you know, I'll just open an Excel spreadsheet, I'll do a quick calculation and it's done. It's just showing people how to use them and supporting the charities. And it was just, with all the skills that we have, and also if you're if you are professionally registered in any, with any professional body, it doesn't need to be BCI, it could be any professional body. There's always con- con- continuous professional development, 
like I have a personal professional development plan. The BCS one has a section where you can evidence that you've done volunteering. You say, I did volunteering for this charity. I helped them with this problem. That's evidence to, to maintain your professional registration. And also, it's, you know, it's like Christmas, isn't it? The more you get in more than you put out. I always get more. When I, when I was doing mentoring, I get more out of mentoring than I do the time I've lost, I've lost, I've lost, the time I've given up doing mentoring, I always get more out of mentoring because I learn more. You'll probably get more out of this, you know, seeing new people, understanding different ways of working than you expect. Yeah. And in fact, something I meant to, to add into this into this um, discussion, but but didn't, was that, that but it, as a vision, I'd quite like to see mentors as a vision. Mm -hmm. So not not from the point of view that you've said, but from the other point of view, where I want to do some volunteering, but I don't know how. Well, yeah. now we've got some volunteers who will be a mentor to people who want to get into volunteering. That's a potential thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, so, so where were we? We're on, what can I do? So, so that's, oh, sorry, I've gone. Sorry, he's got too many mice. Windows. It's all about the windows. <laughs> Bear with us. There's a technical issue. This is this is. I, I, when I when I do digital poverty talks, I say this all the time. Every single time we have industry leaders doing a talk of digital poverty, somebody, quite often me, cannot work the technology. So what what can I do next? I'm just going to use. I'll introduce this one. Oh, that's much easier. Well, here we are. So the next steps. So if we now understand that everyone here has got the skills that might be valuable to do this kind of stuff, what can you as an individual do next to 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 take that next step? To say, okay, I'm in. You got me. I've probably got some skills that can be valuable. What do I do to actually make this happen? So there's a couple of bodies that will help. So not in order here, um, there's an organization called Reach Volunteering who do something for anyone here who might be familiar with STEM learning. STEM learning um, attach, that they provide volunteers, STEM ambassadors, into schools and uh, bodies that have um, school age um, students in. So not only schools, but you know after school clubs, that kind of thing. By volunteers to go in and do additional STEM activities in schools. So certainly the place I work has got a dozen, 20, 30 STEM ambassadors, a new load that have just come through, who are in the next couple of weeks when the school year starts, going to go out and do that kind of stuff. That infrastructure is there already. That infrastructure exists for doing STEM ambassador work. In fact, what we're talking about here is really something a bit like STEM learning. It's a bit like STEM ambassador work, where we've got volunteers with STEM skills, with, with digital IT skills in our case, who want to do something to help others. Only the beneficiaries are not students and schools, Beneficiaries, uh, beneficiaries are charities. Reach Volunteering serves that purpose. I will, I will talk again in the next few minutes about how BCS can fill another gap in there to make this whole thing more effective, but Reach Volunteering already exists and it's there. You're, you're, there's a link at the end, but you'll find them on the internet. Your BCS branch, hopefully, so if you live in Bristol and Bath, if you live in South Wales, if, if we're your BCS branch, then speak to us, speak to me or Michael. Um, and again, BCS, find the BCS website, you'll find branches, you'll find ways to get in touch with us. Um, and that's both if you want to take the next step but don't know how to, or in fact, if you're already doing this and want to tell us how you're already doing this. Hopefully, we have people who are already doing volunteering who will offer their stories to us, who will share their stories and say, here's my experience of doing some volunteering, here's how I found value in it, here's how I tried it and didn't find value in it. We can learn from all these things to improve this experience for others. So if you've got a story to share in this area, do share it with your branch. If you approach your branch and say, who's coordinating your local volunteering efforts? And they say, we haven't got anyone. Then please do one of two things. Maybe both of these things. If you can offer to do that for them, say, okay, I went for this talk. I was inspired by it. Um, both of the speakers were an inspiration to me. I now want to do more volunteering. I will volunteer to step up and help your branch to coordinate these efforts locally. If that doesn't work out, or if you're for whatever reason not able to do that, um, then just speak to me. Speak to me and Michael and say, I live in this area. This is my local branch. I don't think they've got anything going on in that area, but I have, and we can have that conversation with them and see if we can make that happen. 
Additionally, though, there's things like you've got existing networks. If, you, if you're working in this industry, you, ha- you certainly have got existing networks. You've got probably LinkedIn. You've got people that you work with day to day. You've got other connections that you will know about um, who work in these areas. Speak to them. They may be doing this already. But ultimately, there's all, also an organization called um, CITA, the Charity IT Association, um, that I've put a link in at the end, um, who do a similar job. I find that the, the plethora of organizations working in this area a little bit troubling, maybe. I think it all feels a little bit sporadic. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And I think this is perhaps one of the areas where BCS can step in. I realize there's a risk here. Well, now if we step in, now there's 14 organizations doing this rather than 13. But I think our goal here should be to coordinate efforts here and to make this more simple to use. So Mm -hmm. for you, you're an individual. What do you do next? I think what you do next Look at organizations called Reach Volunteering. Find a volunteering opportunity, either locally, because you live nearby and you want to help someone else out, or through Reach Volunteering to coordinate these things. Now, here we have an opportunity for BCS, I think. Here's so BCS involvement here is not just about having individuals and charities get together and do their thing, which is what you do through, through Reach Volunteering. But BCS involvement here, I think, will give us the ability to coordinate our efforts more effectively. But then here's the here's the concrete thing to tie the notion of skills based volunteering. We've talked about this already. I'll be a bit a bit more detail now to tie the notion of skills based volunteering in with CPD and skills enhancement. So as Michael's already said, we can talk about volunteering as CPD. We do continuing professional development, the standard. We record this. We, we get value from this. So years ago, it might have been that we get five points for a thing. Now we are much, much more thinking about what value did that add to me? I did the thing. What did I learn from that experience? How much value did that experience give to me? If I did some training and it did nothing for me, that's not CPD. If I did an activity and it did add value to me, it genuinely made me better at what I do. It gave me a better, more rounded, more in-depth experience. That's value that I can take value from, that I can measure. That skills enhancement, though, part of these could be stretch goals. The volunteer can could not just say, I'm a bit better at what I do, but it can be, I've learned an entirely new skill set. That's the same kind of thing, but much, much more so. So we'll talk now briefly about that. What can BCS do? So there's a couple of things here where we'll think about the various ways in which BCS can help out here. So if we're a BCS branch, so Bristol and Bath or South Wales, we can find a volunteer. I would like to have, I don't want to do this myself, by the way. I want someone else to do this. I want to do other things. So I want locally to find a volunteer. I think perhaps one volunteer might not be enough. I think there's a lot of work to do in this area. There's a lot of work, there's a lot of value we could add in this area. So I'd really quite like to have several volunteers per branch working in this area. So if you already work for a branch, if you already volunteer for BCS branch, either step up and volunteer to lead this activity yourself, And if you want to take on that role, speak to me and I'll tell you even more in-depth thoughts about how I think this works. But today will hopefully be a start. Speak to others in similar roles. If you want to do some, if you work for a branch, you want to do some of this stuff, it might be that you can speak to me directly, speak to Michael directly, speak to others directly if you're already doing this. And then hopefully we will start to form a network of um, BCS charity engagement volunteers, not quite sure what we'd call the role, BCS people. Um, who get involved in this area. I think what this is going to mean for BCS, by the way, is perhaps a little bit of a, a reorganisation. So I certainly, I've been saying for a while now, I've been thinking for a while now, that the way branches work is going to change. The way we, the way we consume online work, o- online learning has absolutely changed, and that has traditionally been a big part of what branches do. I think that's all changed. That's what we're going to carry on changing. I think what we're going to have to do now is learn how to deal with that. Learn how branches are going to operate in the future. So this, for me, is one of the massive, massive key things that I want to see branches doing in the future. Much, much less about having someone turn up for a talk about where the semicolon goes in Python, and then we'll do some networking afterwards. Much, much more about what branch activities are. So massively, massively being more dynamic about the things that branches do. So certainly it will need to be about providing value to our members, but it will absolutely definitely need to be providing value to our members and to wider society in new ways that we hadn't yet thought of. Certainly that we hadn't done enough of, even if we had um, thought of them. 
<clears throat> so what else can BCS do? Oh, we've got another admission. Um, so BCS having branches, we call branches if they've got regional focus, specialist groups if they've got technical focus, and um, student chapters are something else that we have where students in universities and college can coordinate and do their thing. Student chapters are going to be a bit different, I think, both in the, in the nature of how they live, which may well be they live in two different places, um, their day-to-day -day timings, their year-to-year -year timings, the way holidays work, the way their weekdays work, the skill sets they've got, the different social atmosphere that they live in. <clears throat> that means that they're very, very different people. That means that they're, they're, their day-to-day -day is different. How do we coordinate well between branches <clears throat> and volunteers and charities and student chapters to take full advantage of their efforts? Additionally, though, students are probably, certainly students in our industries, are probably looking to spend the next three, four years so from starting a degree, apprenticeship, training course of some kind to the finish. So, well, I want my CV to look better in three years' time. I want to learn Python and JavaScript, and I can't think of any other technical skills. I want to learn all these things. Also, though, uh, we have to imagine, we have to believe, because it's true, that anyone who's coming out of such a course with a little bit at the end saying, by the way, I've been spending really quite a lot of time volunteering, not just volunteering by doing standard volunteering stuff, which is, of course, good in itself. That's the goal of charity work. But doing stuff in my technical area. I've got a load more skills than I otherwise have had because I've done the volunteering. I've done it. I've done it. Imagine how good a CV is going to look if, in addition to all the other stuff, you say, I worked with a BCS mentor for three years doing volunteering, and I helped out some charities doing this bit of technical stuff and this bit of technical stuff and this bit of technical stuff in addition to the stuff that I've learned. So that's going to Dave, make me... So I'm sorry to interrupt. You've just got a question about how you can be reached. Is it better for them to use the email address that's on the website of Groups at BCS for you? Yeah, that'll get through. Yeah. So that that that's, takes a slightly circuitous route to get to me, but that will get to me, yeah. Cool. Cheers, mate. Sorry for interrupting. Always. So this is, this is nothing that BCS can do to make all the various bits inside BCS work well together. And so specialist groups, again, so the way specialist groups is, is the other bit of that. Specialist groups are the things that have um, some kind of specialism. So there's no geography attached. It's just about a particular subject area. <clears throat> so like I said, I work with the digital divide and the prior specialist groups. I've worked a little bit with the new university specialist groups, only a little bit. So digital divide is about making sure that people who are digitally disadvantaged get, get to be undigitally disadvantaged. So digital divide is, I can't use the internet, I can't use these technical skills because I don't have the money or the devices or the connection or all that kind of stuff. And that means that I can't socialise during lockdown, I can't get a GP appointment, I can't get cheap online banking. All of these things have complex causes, complex consequences, and we can add value there because this is absolutely an area where BCS, in fact, BCS does have a strong focus in this area. This is absolutely an area where individuals can add skills. There will be local drop-in centres near where you live where you can find a direct help to people who can't do this to make their lives better. I work for the Pride Specialist Group as the Inclusion Officer. Um, LGBTQ people do suffer differently from digital divide. There's, a, there's an overlap there that I've, I've been working in. Um, and that, that's just one other example of, uh, of how specialist groups work. Some specialist skill sets, though, project management, interface security, enterprise architecture, there will be technical specialisms inside specialist groups, inside BCS, that can add a very, very particular value. So project management for me is an obvious one only because a friend of mine started doing exactly this as a project manager. Um, so there will be technical skills that can add value directly to a charity but even more directly with the digital divide prior to university because these have that social aspect to them as well. And here's that CPD thing. Here's the detail behind the CPD thing. <clears throat> imagine that I want to go into uh, program management. I don't, but imagine I want to go to program management. So I do, I do a gap analysis. I look at the skills I've currently got. I use Sophia Plus. So have a look at Sophia Plus just in general. This is a, this is a value that you can get from BCS just in general, regardless of any charity work. I see what skills I want to get. I see what, I see what skills I have. And then what Sophia Plus will let me do is understand training opportunities that I might need to take advantage of 
skills that I might need to get right, get better at to become a program manager. Um, and it will give me the detail about things like what do what does this skill set involve? What is this skill set? I need to be level five in this skill set to get a job in this area. Dive down into detail. Here are some training courses available to you. Here's what you need to do. Here's the skills you need to do. Get up these skill sets, then your CV looks better, then you can get a job doing what you want to get a job doing. But what if you can't get those opportunities in your day job? What if your day job doesn't do that? What if you want to take a career change that doesn't really fit in with your current day job? We can add value into this picture potentially by saying, yep, there is programmatic stuff. You can do training courses, that's all fine. But to get some experience under your belt as well, we'll provide you with a mentor. We've got mentors who do this. We haven't, but we will have in a year. This is the vision. We'll have a mentor who will help you to do this. There's a charity opportunity to do some stuff on a trustee board in management, doing something where we will say these skills can be enhanced by your volunteering efforts. And we will provide you the infrastructure, this BCS value add infrastructure to make this happen. So in a year's time, not only have you done the training, but you've done some actual stuff that demonstrates that you can do this area. Now your CV looks a lot better. This is one area where BCS could potentially add significant value. So who are the other players in this, in, in this, not in this industry, in this picture, I guess. So you, you, I'm guessing that people aren't typically aware of what the first two things are, even in their, their broad nature. So Baines 3SG is a charity in Bath, Bath, this Bath and North East Somerset. There's a local council, that's why it's called Baines 3SG for those of you who don't live around here. Vosca is a similar charity in Bristol. I, I've got no idea where that name comes from. These are effectively charity support charities. These are charities whose goal is to support other charities in doing their thing. So this field, so I've done a little bit of work with Baines 3SG. I haven't done much work with Vosca. I haven't done any work with Vosca, in fact. Um, but this is the kind of thing we're thinking about. If they want to help other charities, we want to help other charities. There's got to be a natural alliance that happens here. Reach Volunteering, I've spoken about already, which um, does that thing that feels a little bit like STEM learning, for those of you that already know STEM learning. Charity will go to Reach Volunteering and say, we need a trustee to set on a trustee board. Here's what the thing is. And then the volunteer will look through this list of opportunities available and say, that one, I'm going to apply for the gig, and I'll get the gig or not, and I'll do the thing. And that's how these things get tied together. I registered recently with Reach Volunteering. Seems to work quite well. It seems to be fairly slick. The Digital Poverty Alliance, so I'm an ambassador for the Digital Poverty Alliance, and its goal is to end digital poverty by 2030. Our goal is to end digital poverty by 2030. So the goal here is clearly one that aligns well with, um, with BCS goals, making IT a good for society. That must naturally mean not leaving anyone behind. It's not making IT good for most of society, it's making IT good for all of society. So, in fact, the 12th of September, so that's two weeks-ish, maybe maybe slightly less than two weeks, is a National End Digital Poverty Today. So there'll be lots of events going on in this area coming up. So watch out in technical um, media for that. NCVO, also SCVO, NICRA, National Council of Voluntary Organisations. Um, so, so charities can become members of NCVO and get charity support. So this is starting to feel like there's already this picture where there are bodies out there that will support charities. And that's absolutely true. That really is true. And that, and that happens That happens effectively. The thing that's missing is that our part of that is not being played well enough. So NCBO is absolutely something that I think BCS should get more involved with, that we should get more involved with. Local government, local education authorities, these are where we start tying together things like schools. Schools aren't charities. Schools are, if you stretch your mind well enough, schools are voluntary organisations, kind of. Um, school trustees are volunteers. I'm a trustee, pardon me. School governors are volunteers. I don't get paid for being a school governor. It's not that I want to get paid for being a school governor. I'm not allowed to get paid for being a school governor. It's a voluntary position. This is somewhere we can, where we can play a part and, and add value. And actually, it, it is really valuable. So, Michael, you spoke about mentoring and learning stuff and doing mm -hmm. this thing where volunteering has been good for me. As a school governor, that's absolutely true. That really, really is. It's not just enjoyable. It's also really, really valuable. It's super valuable. No question. I realise we're getting um, close to uh, close to the yeah, end of our time. Five minutes. 
I'm going to try and speed up a little bit. I'm counting seven, but I'm going to try and speed up a little bit. <laughs> I think there's a natural way in which BTS is going to have to um, reorganise a little bit. So the branch boundary. So well, I talked about local councils, local education authorities, local charities. Our branch boundaries don't match this. You know, if I were to speak to yeah. some bit of BTS to say what's going on in Somerset, I don't know. Because Somerset's down there somewhere, Bristol Bounce up here, we're going to see the reorganisation. We can deal with that. That's just an admin. Here is the thing. Here is the big thing that I want to focus on. This is our three or four calls to action. So here's what I want everyone on the call to think about going away this evening and tomorrow and actually going away and doing these things. If you are not already a fellow committee member, council member, trustee of BCS, if you're not already doing this, if you're just someone who's on the call because you're interested and you want to help in this area, then what we're thinking about here is just offer to help. The way to offer to help is probably to sign up with Reach Volunteering. Look at CITA as well. Look at the charity uh, IT association as well. But the internet will give you loads of stuff. Reach Volunteering will be a decent first step. Sign up, give me your details, look through the options available, think about what your skill sets are, do some volunteering, actually get involved. If you do that though, do also tell that you're doing that because the more information we get about how this works, the more information we get about how this whole process hangs together, the better, the more effective we can make it in the future for others if you can be a pioneer in starting out and doing this skills-based volunteering. Also consider joining BCS if you're not already a member. I realize that most people here are members, but I know, I know for a fact that some aren't. So do consider joining because that will give you the opportunity to help us out in getting the BCS involved in this picture and then, and then making the whole picture more effective. <clears throat> I've got a particular call to action for anyone here who's a BCS fellow. So BCS fellows and all branches will have BCS fellows attached. All BCS fellows have, by definition, got this proven record of leadership ability and leadership actually doing the thing. So if you're a BCS fellow, um, I need you, we need you to get involved. You need to link up with your branch, find your branch, find specialist groups that work with you, find branches to work with charities and lead these activities. I really, really do want to see BCS fellows leading stuff. Branch committees can do the admin stuff. I really want the fellows to add value by being the value add. And in this charity area, you've got the skills, the leadership, and the network existing to make this happen. That's by definition pretty much what a fellow is <coughs> at BCS. Get involved, do this, make it all happen. If you're working for BCS committee, here's where you can add the admin value. So there's some kind of iron here between who's adding the value and who's doing the admin. Um, especially with files and anything members, but for that irony works for me. Find your local support charity. So Baines 3SG and Vosca are here. In fact, look at those. Look up Bain, Baines 3SG and Vosca. See what kind of things they are. <laughs> Pardon me. Find your local one. You will have locally a charity, several, several charities perhaps, whose goal is to support other charities. Find out who they are. If you're already uh, working for BCS branch committee, find out who they are and make that link. Get your committee to, for, to, to give you a portfolio, to find someone to do the volunteering, to speak to all your members to get involved as well. Lead this activity for your branch. If you want to lead that activity for your branch and you want some additional advice, speak to us. Speak to us directly and we'll give you some advice on how to make that happen locally. You'll have access to your members. You'll be using this access to your members locally anyway. Speak to them about this. Find volunteers who want to do charity stuff using their skills and make that happen locally. You'll be a step behind us, but you'll be a small step behind us. We're basically leading the way on this now. Um, don't feel that you are, um, you, you don't know enough to make this happen. We're all in the same boat. We're all forging this route. If you're here on this call now, this means you're keen to get this done. If you're keen to do this, we will help you do it. So I just run through that list of resources again, and then that's kind of it. And I'm bang on time, I think. So REACH Volunteering is that organisation that will tie up charities who've got requirements to people who might fulfil those requirements. So I will recommend um, having a look at that and considering signing up. Charity IOT Association I know less about, but it's the same kind of thing. The dedication here is to say a couple of industry bodies getting together to form an association that, that, will, that will try and um, push this aim forwards. Unfortunately, I think though the reason why I'm doing this talk is because these things together haven't yet been quite enough. So we need to work in concert with all of these organizations to push this agenda forwards and to make it, uh, to, to achieve it better. 
NCBO, SCBO, NICVA, they're the full names of those organizations. These are national bodies. So national, I'm fairly sure NCBO says England on its website, but actually covers England and Wales. There's a lot of things when covering England and Wales, but, um, but don't definitely say so. We've actually, had, um, we've actually had some suggestions in the chat as well, some additional ones that we can add. Great, yeah. Oh, so in fact, I think we automatically get a, a download of the chat, but I mm -hmm. will I will try to make sure if I do that, in fact, you can do that now, because I can't make it work, just to make sure we get a copy of that. But thanks for everyone who's put chat in. So apologies for going really close, uh, too close to the time that, I, that we don't get to make sure that anyone who has any questions can ask them. So do we have any remaining questions? We've got about two minutes, and I think it's automatic. So are there any further questions? No, I, um, I'm not sure, Michael, if you've gone, or if it's just mine as well. Way too many questions. No WCVA. Uh, so WCVA, yeah, I think the NCVO covers uh, Wales, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so I'll make sure we I'll make sure we get a list of those questions. Thanks to everyone. I think we might get booted automatically at six thirty, so I will end it now. Um, please do stay in touch. Please, do, I'll make these things available um, in the next day or so through BCS. I'll make the slides available through BCS. Um, but what I do see is that vision in a year. I think we've. I think in a year we can achieve this vision. So I will. I will follow up with a bit more detail, a bit more publicity on what I want that vision to be. Hopefully today has given uh, a kickoff for this stuff. If we can now begin to 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 work on this now today tomorrow in a year's time, I really do see that we can uh, make something really really valuable happen in the next year. So thanks everyone for your time. Hopefully we'll be in touch again soon.